Hello, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Miss Finance. On this channel I go through all things accounting, finance and investor related, so if you like this kind of stuff please do consider subscribing and otherwise let's get straight into the video. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at an Excel question as an example to hopefully better your understanding with Excel and also help you to prepare for your AAT synoptic exam. So let's jump onto the computer now and take a look. Okay, so on the right we've got this Word document here which has got our instructions on what we need to do on the Excel file on the left. So we're working with Indiana Books and we're just going to go down this list here one by one on the spreadsheet on the left. So in a tab labelled Detail Analysis we need to reformat all text in this sheet to Times New Roman. So we're on the Detail Analysis tab here. So if we click on that little button it selects all text that's on the sheet. So if we go to this drop down here on the Home tab we can find Times New Roman by simply typing T and finding it here by scrolling down. So you can see there. Okay, so it's going to highlight that in green to show that we've done it. So next, use copy and paste values only, not paste link, to insert the figures from the worksheet budget summary, column D, into the correct positions in the current budget column column G of the detailed analysis worksheet. So if we go to the budget summary, this is column D here. So we've got up to operating profit. So let's copy here. We don't need this 9450. That's simply the volume there. So that's the budget. So we're going to pop it into budget and you can see 9450 and 9450 match. So make sure you've got these aligned correctly. So this one here is paste values. So the one that says one, two, three. And you're going to make sure that that lines up. There we go. So we've done that. Let's green it up. Now we're going to insert a row underneath row three. So row three is here. Now, if you want to insert a row, you actually need to insert the row beneath it. And then right click and insert like so. Now you can do this a different way if I undo this by using this little arrow on the top. If I go to the home tab there is an insert here under cells so home cells insert cells and you can do it that way too or if I undo that again if you use control and plus on your keyboard that will do an insert row as well. Okay so moving on Enter the text percentage in A4. So type that out there. That's an easy one. Now in F4, G4, H4 and I4, as in these, calculate the percentage of each output versus current budget. There are a number of ways that you can do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this 8,000 units here divided by 9450. Now I'm going to fix the 9450 by going shift 4 on my keyboard to get my dollar sign up and I'm going to put that before the G and the 2 and that will fix column G row 2. So I'm going to drag this along here and you can tell that this is correct because that 1 is saying that 9450 Five zero divided by 9450 is 1 or 100%. And if you wanted to double check the cells, you could click into it and make sure it's selecting the right cells. Now, the other thing that I'll say here is that you don't have to do this. You don't have to fix it. You could manually just do that and select the, the cell G2 yourself. But that just saves a little bit of time in the exam. So moving on. Format the cell percentages to two decimal places. So if we highlight these here, go to percentage style. So if you go to home under number percentage style, and you can see here that automatically rounds that to the nearest percentage. So if we use this little button here that says increase decimal, if you just hover over it, press it twice, that then gives you the percentage to two decimal places. 
Next, we want to calculate the budget for each output for the revenue and each cost using absolute referencing when necessary. So when they're saying absolute referencing, what they mean is that they want you to keep that cell highlighted. So for instance, if I manually wanted to work this out here, then I could go, all right, so what's the revenue in G6 times by 0.8466? So that'll give me the same number as if I was going, okay, what's this at? Times by F4, so what's 1039500 times by the 84.66? You see there's no difference, but that one is using absolute referencing, whereas that is manual. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix F4 so that I can just drag this formula all the way down, like so. I'm going to do the exact same thing again in H and I, but I'm going to make sure that I'm picking up the correct cells. So I'm going to select G6 and I'm going to make sure it's selecting this 105.82 and I'm going to drag that down. And here I'm going to make sure that this is picking up the revenue in G6 times by 132.28% and drag that down. And again, if you're not sure and you just want to do a quick spot check, what you can do is manually you set off, go, okay, what is that times by that? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so what is 119,000 times by 1.3228? That gets you there or thereabouts. To that. So you know that that's correct now. let's move on down the list. So in the detail analysis worksheet, format the values to the nearest thousand. So if I highlight all of this here, and again, I go to this little comma style, and then use this decrease button here, decrease decimal, that then will round this to the nearest thousand for you. So let's green that. Now make sure all column headings typo there in rows two to four are in bold and italic so in row two to four so here that needs to be in bold and italic so I can either click on home go to font here and click B and I or if I didn't want to do that I can highlight these cells and use control B and control I on my keyboard. So that's that. Next, calculate the operate between profit for each level of output in row 16 and show profit as a positive figure and losses as a negative figure. Okay, so the operating profit is going to be the revenue minus the sum of the above. So again, I'm just going to drag this formula along. Now, can you see here though, again, it said show profit as a positive figure and losses as a negative figure. So if we just summed up, if you weren't sure the total cost here, you can see that that's 914709 versus only 880123 for revenue. So what we're going to do here is make sure that this is showing a negative, which it is, so we're happy. But that's one way you can double check if you've got a profit or a loss. We could do it in the end column there, you can see costs are more than revenue. Now perform a spell check and ensure all cells fit column width and are visible. So I'm just going to highlight all the columns that I can see and I'm going to double click on the end here. So I'll do that again. So highlight and use this, double click. And that should fit those all within the screen and make them all visible. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no spelling mistakes. Can't see any, looks like everything's in good order. I'm going to green that up. Next to copy the range A3 to I3. Okay 
onto a new worksheet, keeping the format in the same. Okay. So I'm going to create a new worksheet first, and I'm going to call this values. And if you want to rename something, if you want to add in a new sheet and rename it, you just double click onto it, or you can right click and go to rename. Okay, so I'm going to copy this into the same position. So I'm just going to click on the first paste option to make sure that the formatting is exactly the same. And I'm just going to highlight all of this and use that double click on the end just to make sure it's visible again. So next I want to copy the range A7 to I15 and paste only the formatting and values. So A7 to I15. So right click and copy, go to this values tab and I'm just going to pop it straight underneath here because it hasn't told me any different. If you click on home and you go to the clipboard and you go to paste, there is one here that says value and number formatting. So I'm just going to click on there. So that's done. Now produce subtotals for each of materials, direct labour, variable overheads and fixed overheads. Okay, so I'm going to just insert those directly underneath these here. So I'm just going to do equals sum of F4 to F5 and we're going to drag that along there. Now I can just copy and paste this into each of the subtotals. And then I can make sure that they align up. So that's definitely including row 4 and 5. That's definitely including 7 and 8. But then this one has got three rows so I'm just going to make that bigger. And copy that along by just dragging from the bottom of the cell and that one is correct of just having two so that's that done next show subtotals in scenario a current budget scenario b and scenario c okay so the grand total is going to be that plus this subtotal, plus that subtotal, plus that subtotal. I'm just going to drag that along there. Okay, so you can green that up there. And then hide the detail to only show the subtotals and grand total. So one of two things here. You can either highlight the rows that you want to hide and right click and click hide, which is one way. But the way that I prefer is to highlight those cells, go to data, and there's this little outline tab here. And if you click on group, what you can then do is click between one and two to either show or hide that information. So just going to do that again for all of these so that only the subtotal is showing. Okay, it just makes it easier as well when you're looking at a lot of data so you can quickly scroll up here between the two. Okay, so that's that. So I hope you found all of that useful. Please do consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video. Hair everywhere. Nothing's gonna work, is it? It's just one of those days. Meet Harold. If you ever need a study buddy. <laughs>